Hi, welcome to Lodestone. This is Mark Hooper. Today I'm going to show you some basic video editing techniques using Adobe Premiere CS6. However, if you have a previous version of Premiere, don't worry. The techniques I'm going to show you will work in those versions of the software as well. So the topics I'm going to cover in this demo include, I'm going to show you how to go in and select specific footage from your clips using the source monitor and bring that information down to your timeline. Then we're going to take a look at how to apply an effect from our effect panel and then fine tune the effect using the effect control panel. Then we'll apply the default transition for our clips, which is the cross dissolve. And finally, we'll render out a movie that we'd be able to upload to YouTube. So let's get started. Okay, so I have Premiere open and I've already brought in some movie clips and a background MP3 file by choosing File Import and selecting the files that I want to bring in. Just going to click Cancel because I already have them here in my project panel. Now I've taken some time here to go ahead and create sequences ahead of time as well. And on the sequence that we're going to be working on today, I've brought in the background music on the Audio 2, the music MP3 file, and I've set markers on the timeline by previewing the file here in the program monitor, pressing play, previewing the file. I simply pressed M on the keyboard at locations in the music that I think a transition from clip to clip would look nice. And those markers appear here on the timeline. So now I'm ready to start bringing in some footage onto my timeline. I'm going to go over to my project panel and I'm going to take a look here at clip number 98. I'll double click on the icon and that's going to open up the file in my source monitor. Now my playhead here is in the source monitor available to move around the clip. I can kind of scrub through and determine a location that I would like to have the very first clip appear in the, uh, the timeline. So I'm going to start here around 14 seconds. Now I'm missing some controls here on CS6. I have to expand this panel out to be able to see all the controls that I want to see at the bottom of the uh, source monitor. So I have a location to set as my endpoint for this clip. I'll come down for the mark endpoint icon and click to select that. I could have also pressed I on my keyboard. Now I'm going to scrub my playhead about six seconds down the timeline. That's approximately the location from marker to marker. And I can see here on my timeline about six seconds in between these markers is what I'm looking for. So I'll go ahead and move this six seconds down, set the out point for this clip. And you can see now the little highlighted area for this clip is showing up in the source monitor. Now I'm ready to bring it down to my timeline. I'm going to show you some options here for insert and overlay. However, I want to make sure that my music clip and markers aren't affected. So the music clip, I'm going to take the option here to lock this track into place. So I'm going to turn the lock on for the music track. With the playhead on my main timeline at the beginning, I'm going to click to insert this section of the clip onto my timeline. Now, when I do that, it brings both the audio and video. In my case, I don't want both the audio and video. So I have another option that I could use. Let me just select this clip and delete it. And that is right here at the bottom of the source monitor. I have an option to just drag the video only. So if I select this icon and drag this down onto the timeline, I can see that it only brings the video portion. Now I'm ready to go to my other clips and bring in footage. So I'm going to switch over to clip number 80. And I already have some in and out points that I set ahead of time. So I'm going to drag this into place. And if I see that these aren't lining up just right with the markers, that's not a problem. I have additional footage. Let me just move this out of the way. And I can go to the edges here and expand these clips to be more aligned with the markers that I had set. Next, I'm going to go to clip number 86. I already have some markers in place. Next, I'm going to uh, 
go here to 90, double clicking, and again I'm just going to trim these up a bit, getting them a little closer to my markers. go to the edge of this one and bring it back a bit and I'm just going to return to the very first clip that I used number 98 and I'm going to choose a different portion for the end of my video let me take my playhead back to this location and I'll set an in and out point and drag the video into place here. So that's matching up really close to the markers and the, the time of my music. Now I'm going to show you an effect that we want to uh, apply to these clips. I want the fall leaves to really stand out and I want the rest of the video to be more in black and white. So I'm going to go to my effects rack and I'm going to choose the effect of leave color. So if I simply start to type out leave I can see that it's going to expand the video effects color correction and there's leave color. I'm going to drag this over to my first clip. Taking a look at my monitor, I have my playhead in place on top of the clip. Looking at the program monitor though, I don't see any changes. And that's because in order to have this effect be applied, you have to go to the effect controls panel and you can see now that leave color has been added to the default controls of motion, opacity, and time remapping. I'm going to use the eyedropper and come over and select the leaves in the tree of my program monitor. The other options, I need to expand this so you can see. Amount to decolor, if I increase this to 100%, you can see that the rest of the video is now black and white but the color of the leaves of the tree are still in the original color. I'm going to increase the range here or the tolerance to include a little bit more in that range of colors and then soften up the edges. Now that I have the leaf color for this clip I can simply select this effect choose edit copy then I'll shift select my other clips and choose edit paste and it has now applied the effects to the other clips let me deselect and then select just one clip here so you can see that now leave color with those settings that I had for the first clip have been applied but if I need to make adjustments to this maybe decrease tolerance and softness on some. I can make individual choices now for the uh, different settings for each clip. All right, ending stages here. Let me select all of my clips with the shift key. I'll just select all the clips. I want to apply a transition and I'm just going to use the default transition from clip to clip. And the easiest way to do that with all the clips selected would be to go up to Sequence and choose Apply Default Transitions to the Selection. And that's going to add cross dissolve in between each one of my clips now. I'm going to go to my effects rack and add some effects to the beginning and end of my clips. So in the effects rack, I'm going to clear out the search that I had before, go to Video Transitions, dissolve you can see there's cross dissolve it has the highlight because it's the default transition I'm going to choose dip to black and add that to the beginning of the first clip and I'll drag dip to black to the end of the last clip now I'm going to switch over I've already gone through I've got a final sequence in place here that I went in and fine-tuned the settings for the leave color I'm ready to export this out for you to take a look. So I'm just going to use this sequence instead. I'll choose File, Export, Media, and in the Export Settings, I'm going to choose QuickTime as the format, the preset for YouTube here. I'm going to choose the 
HD 720p 24 frames per second. Select the output name and location that I want to have the file saved to. And then I'll just go ahead and click on export. And rather than have you sit through that, I'm just going to show you the finished piece next. So to review, we've gone into the source monitor and selected in and out points for our clips before we move them to the main timeline. We've also chosen an effect from the effect panel and then fine tuned the effect for each clip in the effect control panel. We applied the default transition of cross dissolve as well as dip to black for our clips. Then we finally rendered out the sequence for use on sites like YouTube. I want to thank you so much for being with us for this session, and for more detailed instruction, come and visit us at www.lodestone.com.